here is a quick walkthrough of uh, the RAG ingest library that you're looking at. First of all, this has only two functions. It's very simple. Uh, function number one is ingesting a PDF and adding annotations. Function number two is creating debugging markdowns so you can see what information is stored in the output to JSON. The first function is the ingest. So if you run number one, you're going to be calling up the processor uh, for PDF ingest, which resides in this file. This is where we run unstructured IO uh, twice. And here is the sequence. This is the main, uh, main part. This is where the work gets done. First, we partition the PDF in input PDF and that partition will create an output JSON that will get stored in 01 partition in your output folder. So uh, we're going to look at what that looks like in a second. The next thing is an opportunity to enrich those partitions. Um, in here I created an enrichment for, uh, let's see where did I put the enrichment? <laughs> Enrichment, oh, here it is. It, the enrichment is, sits in the enrichments Python file. And right now, uh, there is a placeholder for tables and text. This code will only enrich images. So what it will do is go through all of the elements in the partition file, partition JSON, and if it finds an image, then it will grab the image um, binary, send it to LLM for summary. And the way that we do it, it's uh, listed over here. This is the summary function. It accepts a binary, it sends a prompt and uh, gets the result. You should play around with temperature and other settings. And that was the case of a image there is a placeholder for you to create additional processors for uh, tables and for texts. So for instance, you might want to uh, take the table, grab the image for a table, and put a different prompt that will process that table properly because you're not going to get very good results with the default uh, processing from um, unstructured I.O. And similarly, if you want to add tagging to text, so there's a placeholder here and you would have to add a function. The way that this works is it organizes three arrays with a list of all of the elements that are of the three types so that you can do them in sequence. First process all the images, then process all the tables, and then process all the text. Now, after, let's go back to the ingest. After we did the enrichment, that was step number two, we then create chunks from those partitions. Um, and those chunks will get stored in a folder called annotated, sorry, uh, chunked. And then step four, and all of this is op optional um, when you're making on implementation, step number four is to create the annotations. Those are the bounding boxes. And those, bound, those annotations will get stored in JPEGs in the 03 annotated pages. So let's look through the files that get created. The first one is the partition. So partition is lowest level elements. It looks like this. Every element has an element type and it has the text and coordinates where it's located on the page. And if it's an image, you'll get the image binary. You should turn off word wrapping if you want to read this clearly. And you'll have additional data in the metadata. And here is a second element. This one is type narrative text. And it's also, it has coordinates and it has some additional information, etc. Now, uh, in, if you notice, this went through the LLM enrichment. So it already has a pretty robust description of any image or logo. Then, and that that came from step number two when we after we partitioned we enriched, and then step number three was the chunks. So your chunks JSON again I'm going to turn off the word wrap has a composite element and it will reduce so it will reduce your uh, document to uh, a much shorter list of composite elements and each composite element 
has in a binary where, um, where it's storing all of the original elements that were packed into it. And later I'll show you an easy way to see what's in this original element without having to write your own interim uh, um, inspection code. The next folder we said we create is an annotation. So the, the document that I ingested, I already ran it once, is this document I found online. It's uh, some kind of a uh, supplier contract uh, agreement and it has some text with links and it has a table, a lot of tables and some more text. So if you look at the annotation folder and I will open that up so you can look at it a little better. So these are the annotation pages. Every page of the seven pages in the document has an annotation, which essentially is the bounding boxes. And the, there is a table at the top, uh, a legend that will help you figure out what these colors mean. And then there are uh, bounding boxes drawn. These bounding box uh, coordinates come from the partitioned JSON, because if you recall, every uh, low level element, the blue piece of text has the coordinates. Um, they don't get lost in the chunks, but when you're looking at the chunk version of the file, you would have to inspect the ridge elements binary, unpack it, and then look at each element and retrieve the coordinates, which is also possible if you're going to, ultimately you can get rid of the original partition uh, JSON file and only work with this one because all of the data is, it gets passed along. Now, uh, the last step I'm going to show you is a function that generates markdown. And this is not something you necessarily need at this point for um, your implementation of a RAG solution because your JSON has very robust texts in the chunks and in the original elements. But this will help you debug and start to stage your um, final RAG application. And the reason is uh, going to be obvious when you look at the format of this markdown. So I'm going to run the markdown function and it takes a fraction of a second to run and it will create a markdown. Um, it's hard to look at the, the markdown uh, from here. So what we're going to do, we're going to make sure that we have a markdown extension. I'm using this one from Shad 101 WYY. Um, it's pre pretty popular, six million people are using it. And uh, we're gonna go back to look at the markdown and then press the preview button here at the top. And I'll close the original markdown texts and open the PDF so we can look at them side by side. So this is the PDF. And what you are seeing, and I'm gonna add one more thing and that is the uh, chunk JSON. So we're going to open it to the side and let's split this window. So we now have three windows. There you go. So the reason why this is great for debugging is because it, it gives you all of the IDs and elements. So as you're tracking through your app, you can use the markdown to understand what's happening in your document. So there is the first composite element has this ID, which you see here in the markdown. This element has a compound text. This is the combination of all of the text of the original elements that are part of this chunk. If you click on the chunk heading, you will see two ways to look at it. You can look at what is the chunk text, which is essentially this field. This is the combination of everything that's residing in this chunk and it you, we can see that this is pretty much the equivalent of all the way from where's the brief overview brief overview down to the end of the link and if you change the settings uh, for chunking strategy from by title to something else then the or the order and the structure of the chunks may look differently but you don't need to make any other changes in your code so this is the chunk text, but you can also close that and open the original elements. And every element, these are the elements that were highlighted in the annotation on, on the file, has um, a descriptor. So you can see this is an element of type image. You have the ID for that element, the original element. And uh, in the case of an image, the text 
uh, metadata attribute which we enriched with LLM uh, as part of our pre-processing will appear underneath it. Uh, this one is just a regular narrative text. So this came from right here to the, the top left and you have the text ID. And if you want, the coordinates are sitting in the file. Um, if you need to re recreate the order of elements on the page. And um, as you go through every one of the original elements that is part of that chunk will show show up here. You can collapse it and you can keep on exploring your document looking uh, and once you finish a page um, it'll break to the next page so I can see that the first chunk on the, on the second page is this one that ends in A07 and again what is the chunk text? Um, it's this and here's something really interesting just be a, realize that um, uh, we're displaying the chunks and uh, we're uh, we're spinning out a page break after the a chunk completes, but it's quite possible for a chunk to um, span over multiple pages as you no I'm noticing this chunk. So this chunk text starts with subsequent with the title and continues to the next paragraph for all changes. Uh, and then you can see the page break. So that's about it. Here it is. These are the original elements. If you have a table like we have one here, you can click on it and you see that table images are stored. And hint is, remember that we were looking at the enrichment function where um, I, I wrote a image enrichment. I would highly recommend that you write a custom enrichment function for tables because this, um, this text that got extracted from the table is not really usable. It's not well formatted. Um, so write your own text, whether you want to convert the table to a CSV representation or if you want to convert the table to um, a, a full text description of the information that's in it, you'll have to decide how you want to handle it. And as a reminder, that is in the enrichments file. This is where the placeholder exists for you to enrich tables. And what you should be doing is uh, do whatever processing you want, ingest the image of the table and send it out to an LLM. And um, at the end, decide if you want to just overwrite the original text element um, or create your own. And depending on what route you take, you will have to figure out what fields you will extract from the JSON in order to store it in your database. That uh, is almost everything. The only last thing to show you is when we are doing the ingests, let's open up the ingests uh, file, the steps that you can recall, partition, enrich, and chunk. So in the chunk, this is where you can change your chunking strategy. Um, and um, and that's, that's just about it. Um, by the way, the chunking strategy should be um, somewhere in one of these. So let's see, look for a strategy. There you go.